Hello. How are we all doing? This is unusual, isn't it? It's a Saturday morning live stream. Uh, live from the front of my grandmother's wallpaper, as always. I hope you're all well. And somebody raised a good question. What time is it there, Chris? Because I've tried to time this to be a little bit better for our American cave dwellers, our um, Australian cave dwellers all around the world. What time is it? Does this work for you? It's pretty. It's, it's 11 a.m. here, which on a Saturday, I've got to admit, I'd probably still have my slippers on shuffling around with a bowl of cereal. 10 p.m., uh, NZST. Is that New Zealand? ST. What's ST? Is that the Atari Owners Club? Uh, hello, Kevin. Hello, Costado. Hello, Chris. Hello, Stephen. We've got 96 of you. Um, hello to any first time live stream viewers. And a few of you have to had to uh, pause this week in retro to watch. So if, if this is your first live stream because you've not been able to catch it at a sensible time, New Zealand streaming time, thank you. Uh, what happens is we chat. So if you've got any questions for me, fire away. We've got viewer submitted videos on the topic of your caves. So we're going to get lots of good tours of your caves today. Uh, we got a quiz. We don't always do a quiz, but I've got a quiz. Where is it? I've put it into quiz kit. So it's an interactive quiz online. Here it is. So this is a quiz I found in a 1990 magazine. And I've tapped it into QuizKit and we're going to do the quiz later. But I'm not going to tell you which magazine or which month because then you'll start cheating. So we'll do that later. Hello, Amiga Malta. Um, Jess, tech department, Vine. Thank you for following me. And if anyone's got any tech problems, the tech department is right there with Jess. And Richard, clap, clap. Thank you for resubscribing with Prime. Very much appreciated. It's not smash hits, Barry. So uh, let's do um, a channel update first. And just before we do, we've got a few uh, cave dwellers that I just want to shout out. So the first one, I'm going to put a link in the chat. And we're going to give them an RMC hug if you're up for it. Um, it's a new channel. It's a chap who very kindly volunteers at the cave and at the arcade. And... Um, He's just started his YouTube journey and he's, he's he's made up to 90 subscribers. So I reckon we can push him over 100 if you're with me. Uh, I'm going to post there in the chat. Arcade Azrael, a.k.a. Alan. If you want to go and give it a click and a sub, I'm sure it would make his Saturday morning. And I'm not just telling you to do this as a favor. Uh, I'm enjoying his content. He's, he's picking up arcade cabinets and refurbishing them at home pretty cool so thank you everyone for subbing to him and then another cave dweller who i just want to shout out who came to visit the cave recently and it was really lovely to meet him is actually in the chat it's more fun making it so if you want to also click there and give him a sub i think a lot of you will already be subscribed to uh to lee at more fun making it but give him a click give him a sub it all helps oh and there's this guy called banjo guy ollie if you subscribe to him maybe go and unsubscribe that's my advice for banjo guy ollie because <laughs> if you get on the wrong side of him he'll start making parody songs about you he'll start ripping clips out of your videos um unsub please <laughs> he's filthy okay if anyone else has got any channels they want me to shout out just um drop me a message uh put it in chat i'll probably have to unblock it if you put a link but uh, i'm happy to shout out fellow cave dwellers channels if you think others will enjoy it let's have a quick channel update uh video costado thank you for subscribing on prime he's got a video later of his cave tour to watch so um let's start with my channel Where is it? I'm so rusty at streaming. Once a month is not enough for you to be like a quick free-flowing streamer. It takes me a while to figure everything out. Proton Beam, thank you for subscribing. So what have we been up to in the last month or so? Well, we had that huge donation from Robin. That was a two-part series, the RetroTech donation. I don't know if you've watched that video, but it is, it's up there with the most insane donations I've ever had. And, and the mad thing was it was so close. It was 20 minutes from my house. So... I just jumped in my car, went over, picked it up. Some of you got to meet Robin because he... <laughs> thank you, Widgetstein. Because Robin very... Um, uh, I was going to say very kindly. Um, <laughs> he, 
very kindly donated everything, but he was very gracious in accepting the invitation to the cave at the last patron day. And he came along and he didn't just pop in and stick his head in and say hi, everyone, and leave. He spent the whole day there and um, chatted to everyone about the things he donated, tried everything out, had a go in the arcade, and then later emailed me um, when he followed up from the visit to say he was terrible at arcade games, but he had fun. So that was nice. And um, no doubt he'll be back again to a future event. So it's really nice to not just accept a donation from Robin, but, you know, invite him into the, the Cave Dwellers Club um, to come and visit the cave and hang out with us. So that was nice. He's genuinely a lovely, lovely guy. Then we had uh, visitors, the Ted Dabney experience. Well worth listening to that podcast. Uh, a lot of people who I tell about the Ted Dabney experience, people like Dave, for example, from This Week in Retro, they haven't heard of it and then he just absolutely binged on it he loved it so much uh it's just really good interviews with the pioneers of arcades um engineers from uh, from atari i think they've got nolan bushnell himself lined up do i sound a bit robotic james let me know if there's any problems with my audio um so the ted dabney experience are a great chat and that was a really nice way to it was actually alex's event down in the arcade archive so it was a really nice way to support Alex by offering him the space to have his talk and invite all of his people. And um, we, we both got a video out of it, which is always a bonus because it's nice to... Um, I, I'm very aware lately that I'm talking about events at the cave and inviting to people to the cave because I'm just trying to sort of spin up the museum, get it as popular as possible, get people coming in to enjoy it. But every time I mention it on a stream or in a video, I'm very aware that there's a huge amount of people watching the stream right now who there's no way they'll ever get to the cave. So I really try to record talks when I can and share them with you. And hopefully you almost feel like you're there. I don't know, maybe I need to get like a stereoscopic um, camera or something so you can, if you've got a headset, maybe you can actually have a seat in a chair at a talk in future. That would be fun. I'm sure you can do that. Yeah, VR. Hello, Tim. Thank you for the sub. I'm sure you can do that, can't you? Yeah. Okay, I'll get thinking about that. I'm not muted, Chris. Thank you. Then we had the Packard Bell Monitor trying to save the Smash Packard Bell Monitor, including um, uh, three monitors in total by the end of it. One from Arcade Azrael from Alan. And we got two working. One wasn't. Well, we only got one in a case in the end. And just yesterday, the one that wasn't working, we got working. The one that had mold on it. We got that working and we found a really good use for it. Not going to spoil it, but you'll see that in the next Pack of Bear episode, which I'll be working on next week. So that's cool. Uh, Real Minty says there is a streaming service that does 3D recordings of comedy gigs. Yeah, th there must just be a type of camera on a tripod that you can just plonk somewhere that has two cameras to get a stereoscopic view and maybe you can get those 360 degree ball cameras can't you so maybe you know you can turn your head and look around uh, they're probably not cheap but uh, maybe if I ask the right people and we put a little thing in the video saying that they supplied it maybe they'll, they'll help us out you never know um, I did I get emails offering things quite a lot um if I review them and 99% of the time I say no I had one last week which was very tempting but I, I couldn't work it into the channel it was a company that makes cinema seating <laughs> wanted me to review uh, a home row of cinema seats I thought there must be somewhere I can put that in the cave but I just couldn't figure it out uh, um, maybe I should just set up a second channel called um, I don't know car reviews or something and then if you all promise to just immediately subscribe to that channel so it looks like a big channel we could all get ourselves a car each month or each week we'll get a different car given to us to review and i'll pick a cave dweller who gets the car come on it can be like we can all get in on this <laughs> um video castada i used to have cinema seats at home don't bother they're not that comfortable in the long run and Lee says, Samsung Gears 360s sell quite cheap on eBay. Not sure if there's better tech now. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, Steve says, careful, you might be done for impersonating yourself. Steve's Tech Shed. If you want to post a link to your YouTube channel, please do. 
Um, yeah, so Adrian Black, for those who don't know, you probably follow him, big YouTube channel. He's got three channels and his third one was shut down for impersonating himself. And he had real trouble getting through to YouTube to get it unlocked. And um, he did get there in the end, but not before they'd said, yeah, we've reviewed your case and it's all above board. You, This channel is impersonating you and we've shut it down. Like, it, but, but it is me. How can I impersonate myself? Somehow he got there. Um, Steve, you've just posted three stars. Is that you being blocked? Uh, yeah, I did get a mention, Castardo. That was quite nice of him. Hang on, let me just find Steve. Steve's tech shit. Oh, look, I'm logged in as This Week in Retro over on YouTube, so I'm just going to subscribe as well. You get two subs out of me, Steve. And I'm going to post it in the chat. There you go. There's Steve's YouTube channel there if you want to give him a give him a sub. He's up to 347 subs. Let's give him over 350. That'd be nice. So, um, yeah, we did the Packard Bell Monitor, and then the big video so far this month has been Let's Build the Lab. Have you seen the Lab Build video? I was exhausted, absolutely shattered from that. Uh, but I feel like it was all worth it. Um, oh, hello, John. We'll be talking about you, Orin, in a moment. Um, it was nice. It, it wasn't so much cardio, um, lots of heavy lifting. Thank you, Ollie. Uh, and I just, I, I was really happy with how it all came together. There was a lot of planning in advance to get all those bits ordered, make sure everything was in stock, get it all in. And then it was just hard work. 50% of the hard work is getting it up the stairs, as I showed you in the video, and then just getting on with it. And then um, at the end of that video, I said, it's done. We can make videos in it. Yay. Uh, that wasn't quite the truth uh, because Heber, who owned the mill, loaned me a room to dump all my stuff in while I built that lab. And as I mentioned many times in the video, they're such nice people, such a good landlord that I don't want to take liberties with them. And I wanted to get everything back out of that room as quickly as possible and free it up for them. So the last two days solid has been me taking stuff back out of the room and putting it into the other storeroom. And I got there at the end of yesterday. So <laughs> there was two, two more days solid physical labor, but it's done. And I can go in fresh on Monday and, and really get into the recording. Uh, Richard likes the door. Thank you. Um, how big a space does the cave take up now says Jess do you know what I couldn't I'll have to find out for you I couldn't tell you the exact square footage of it I can tell you it is very 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 close to the limit of this the amount of space before you have to start paying business rates to the council <laughs> if I rent any more space it will just push me over the edge and then I'll get an almighty bill that I have to pay. So we're at the limit and we can't we can't afford to go any further. Proton Beam says, how many furlongs? <laughs> uh, oh, hello, Pixel Vixen. So glad you could join us. Yes, that was the that was the point of trying to stream at this time of day so that um, people all over the world could come and join us. I hope you're doing well. And um, uh, I, I see you. You're kind of back on your skateboard after your horrible injury. Hope you're doing well. No chainsaws were involved in the making of the door. <laughs> um, so that's that's that channel. Over, um, I've just got to show you Alex's channel quickly over at the Arcade Archive. I'll post a link because he's hit a milestone this month. There we go in chat. Uh, he crossed over 10,000 subs, which was really wonderful for him. He's been YouTubing for 10 years, slow and steady. Oh, you're not not yet skating. Sorry, I thought I saw somewhere that you were. Um, I bet you can't wait to get back on there. Uh, so, Alex, he, he, he just crossed over 10,000 subs, and you'll notice he's now at 11,000 subs because if we look at his videos, 2,500 views, 5,000 views, 2,500 views, 1,500 views, 57,000 views. <laughs> this video just went stratospheric. And you have to watch it. It's, oh, let's click on it. Let's click on it. So this video, um, it's partly room tour. So there's this amazing, it's a private collection of amazing arcades. It looks like some of you have watched it in the chat. So Alex gets to play on all the arcades. Uh, he gets to go on 
an R360. <laughs> Did anyone go on one of these back in the day? I remember seeing one. I think it was pretty expensive to go on, so I don't. I, I, I just watched from afar. Because you look at it and you go, oh, shall I have 10 goes on other arcades or one go on that? You know, the money in your pocket is limited. Ollie did in Jersey. Nice. Um, and then, I mean, the game room tour was amazing. But the workshop... Oh, we've got an advert. What have we got an advert for? Super things. Okay. Um, the workshop was amazing. He's got like CNC equipment. He's got... Um, What's he got? What's he got? Basically, everything that you could possibly want to create arcade machines. And that Star Wars one he's talking about there is a replica cabinet that he's made, but he's made it so precise that you can take original parts off of an original Atari Star Wars cabinet and plonk it on. Everything will fit and vice versa. I mean, that is just amazing. that and then he shows off all his test equipment so well worth watching that video well done Alex for getting such a you know well deserved huge view count on that video um, and getting his subs up because he's not doing this full time by the way he runs the arcade archive at the weekend to visitors he makes videos part time and at the moment he's still working as a builder um, and he's, he's hoping one day oh hello I've got a cup of tea coming through the door Thank you, tea lady. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, biscuits as well. This is what it looks like to be a top-class Twitch streamer, people. Biscuits through the door. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, that's Alex. Uh, and then little update on This Week in Retro. This Week in Retro is just going from strength to strength. And thank you so much to everyone who listens do we have any listeners in the chat? Everyone who watches on YouTube, if you listen and don't watch, you're not really missing out on a lot. We show things on the video from time to time, but we try to describe them as well. And uh, we've covered all sorts. Uh, Colour on the Vectrex without me. We had Mean Machine Dean there that day. Um, the Guide to PCs. Let's load this up. Hang on. We've got adverts again. So we had Shelby from Tech, Tech Tangents with us. Um, really nice to have the chance to chat with him. There he is. Uh, we talked about Encarta. That was just Chris and I that week. We talked about the Internet Archive being sued. Um, and then this week, it just went live this morning, we had uh, Zypho. Um, I should I should share his channel as well. Um, we talked about uh, whether the, is the PS3 retro. That was the title of that podcast. So that's just come out this morning. If you want to watch it, is the PS3 retro? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the arguments that I make in This Week in Retro is, yes, it came out a long time ago. Oh, we don't want to look at that. But it was discontinued in 2017. So do you go from when it came out or from when it was discontinued? Kosam says, I like the bald one on This Week in Retro. It doesn't narrow it down. Uh, so yeah that, that's the channel updates outside of the YouTube channels um, I mentioned Oren in the chat earlier uh, I've mentioned in the past that we're trying to do a retro repair service at the mill um, let's bring up this there we go retro collective is so far the cave in the arcade and Heber who owned the mill would like to add a retro repair service now how are we doing with that we've got a lab fantastic not my lab that i built we've got uh you know more of a professional lab than a studio lab we've got two fantastic engineers um in the form of orin or john who was in chat and holly who's there working at the arcade today 
just they've more than proven their abilities in fixing everything from Amigas to you know vector arcade machines to 1970s um, arcade boards just great CRT experience as well which is fantastic so we've got the engineers what we don't have we still don't have a name and we still don't have anyone to run the service so what we're looking for is somebody who who can sort of take care of the the customer service the bookings in the bookings out the, the shipping all of that stuff um we just need to find someone we just need to find someone so we're still testing it all out we are repairing things um privately just one or two different things here to make sure we've got all the tools to make sure we've got the knowledge the capabilities figure it all out but that's where we are with it right now so hopefully we'll see that soon um but I am I'm one step back from that service. That's not something that I'm running. It's not something I'm going to own. Uh, I'm just helping to facilitate the, the the spinning up of it, like we did with Alex, so that you know he's running his arcade down there. He's got his little business down there, and somebody else can have their repair business and whatever else comes along. I'm just gonna have a bite of my biscuit. Do excuse me. It's a good biscuit. Thank you, James. Um, Retrocollective.co.uk, by the way, is the place to go if you want to book. Uh, book a visit. Um, somebody, who was it in chat earlier when we just started up, was asking about David Rowe. Are you still here? Really minty. Glad you're still here. So yeah, originally David Rowe was due to um, have a day today and we moved it. Why did we move it? Well, be totally honest with you, we've had a few guest speaker days. Um, they've been fun, but they've been very hard to sell tickets for. So I am extremely passionate about um, David Rowe, Hoffman, the Oliver Twins, people like that. I could sit and watch them all day. But um, when you want to find 30 people who can actually physically get to the cave and spend a day with you and with them, it's pretty hard, pretty hard. And what I find is when we do our patron days, they always sell out. They're really, really popular, great days. So what I've decided to do is move guest speakers into patron days so that we know it will be a busy day. So the patrons get extra value, if you like. They get an even better day and a varied day. They get a different day every time. So we've um, we've merged two of our upcoming guest speakers into the next patron day. So that will be on the 12th of April. Um, I haven't put the tickets up set on sale yet. I'll do that next week. And um, David Rowe will be there. Artist from video games, magazines, did the backdrops to the TV show Nightmare, uh, amongst other things. And Jim Bagley will be there. 12th of April is in the past. It was a great day. It was just me, David Rowe, and Jim Bagley. <laughs> 12th of May, you're right, 12th of May. So, um, uh, yeah, so Jim Bagley will be there, who many of you will know as uh, an incredible um, ZX80 coder. He's lots of Spectrum games. Done ridiculous things on the ZX80, like uh, you can play Dragon's Lair on it, <laughs> thanks to him. Um, Game Boy Games, he's got a really interesting history. So they're both going to come and do talks on the 12th of May, not April. Um, and Reese says, any plans for more board game nights? So we've, we're trying to get into a tradition of having a board game night the evening before the patron day, so that anyone who's come from afar and is staying over can just come and have a pretty relaxed game, board game. Reese turned up with a box of beer. Why not? Um, play some games, have some beers and ease into a weekend at the cave. So the reason I haven't put the patron day up yet, Reese, is just because I'm just waiting for confirmation on the board game um, event. It was funny, the board game event. It was split into two. There was advanced board gaming and then there was casual board gaming. I went for the advanced board gaming. I am not an advanced board gamer, I discovered. We had, I would say, 60% of a game in the two and a half hours we were there. And the uh, the casual board gamers, I think they had four or five games. <laughs> I 
I mean, I, I have to drive home after these events back to Swindon. Well, you lot, you have your board games and then you go to the brewery and drink beer. I'm tempted to book a hotel myself in Stroud. <laughs> or set up a camp bed in the cave. I probably said that too loud. Lily might have heard in the room next door. Um, okay, so that's that. And then the only other thing I really need to update you on on the channel is Mr. Multisystem and products. Um, we have three things which will be going online next week. That's what I'm going to say. Three new things for the Multisystem shop next week. Tell you all about them when they come up and make videos and all of that stuff been a little bit quiet on the socials with the multi-system but that's just because uh they've been busy hello judge drock nice to see you here um so there you go that's the channel update and we're going to come on to viewers videos now let me find out how to do that nice and slick come on now uh our site gone we're going to turn the music off, which has faded perfectly. It's like I planned it. And then our first viewers video on the topic of viewers caves. Oh, Technic, have you ever had Roland in your cave? Roland in the caves. I've got to, I've got to keep an eye on ticket sales. Let's see if we ever have a Roland. Our first tour comes from Tim, who is in the chat. Um, hopefully audio and everything is working. Let me know if not and we'll start it again and fix it. Here we go. Hi, Tim Beefit 66 here. How do you know when you've got too much stuff when you do a game tour video in 90 seconds? Oh, right. We're off to a strong start. Hopefully you can hear it okay. Uh, we're off to a strong start because Tim's added captions. This is next level editing. We've got captions. The games will. Anyway, here goes. First of all, the Wall of Games. These are mainly games I acquired nice. for myself or my children back in the day. We've had tours from Tim before, and I don't recognise this room. So I don't know if he's moved room, expanded into a new room. I don't know. Maybe he can tell us. But look at all those Jag games. And um, there is uh, also some additional stuff, like a full set of Atari Jag cards, which I acquired more recently. They found a cannon fodder, so I have that in many different flavours. Uh, we Hang on, I'm looking at the mug collection. We've got an old RMC one. We've got a, a ZX Spectrum customized one. We've got Horus, Chaos Engine, Dig Dug. I can't, oh, we've got a T-Breaks one. Good mug collection. And um, I'm quite enjoying the modern Evercade system. So you'll see a few carts up there. Spud by Night, thank you for subscribing. Um, and Fluxed Capacitor, thank you for following. So we've got, um, is that the Everdrive carts? Yeah, all the collections. I think that's what they are. Um, I'm looking up there at the uh, top. Sorry, you can't see my mouse pointer. I'm pointing at things with the cursor and go, I'm looking up there. You can't see it. So top right, I'm looking at the LucasArts archives. Two boxes, they look interesting. Here's my workspace. The computers I tend to leave out, Apple II, Spectrum and A4000 are hooked up. Oh, look at that marquee. We've got um, a, an LED marquee up there. Okay, which I do use from time to time. And uh, a great deal of collectible stuff I've acquired over the years. Nice. And then I have a number of computers. Um, <laughs> I'm stretched for Dave. Is, uh, this is my shelf of um, flops, enterprise, Memotech and so on. <laughs> just just savour that caption for a moment. Um, all your base, Chris Retro. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Here's my At Legends pinball, a digital pinball I've been modding in the last nice. few years. So here you can see my PVM with a bunch of consoles. It's a big one. That Sony PVM. Oh, we've got a nice Vectrex. We've got a ZX81 on display, 3DO, PlayStation, PC Engine. I can see a 
<laughs> I was about to say I can see a boxed copy of Macintosh System 7.5, but that's my own background behind the video. <laughs> I'm confusing my collection for yours. And um, we got the Jaguar and an MSX there. And Vectrex. Finally, a couple of poster close-ups where they've been signed by the game authors. Ooh, lovely. Hope you enjoy the quick tour. Oh, there we go. We've hit the 90 second limit. Thank you for staying within the limit. David Braben signed Elite Poster. Nice. So, um, Tim's, I mean, I did a cave upgrade recently, but Tim's cave has gone from strength to strength since we last saw it. I'm really glad we chose this topic already. It's nice to see how you've evolved your own games rooms. So thank you very much, Tim, for sharing that. Our next one, it's your boy, Control Reese. Let's see what he's got for us. Hey everyone, Reese here, and I'm really busy at the minute, so I don't have time for a big high production value video. With so there we go, that's the end of Reese's video. Thanks, Reese, for submitting that. Sorry you didn't have time. Let's go into the next one. <laughs> no, we'll carry on. Your boy and fancy editing and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to show you some of my favourite things that I have in my room here that you might not be aware of. So I think we'll start with my almost complete Atari Jaguar boxed game collection. I've got Oh, Reese. Sorry, but Tim's got the complete collection. Sorry, mate. 46 of the 50 commercial cartridge releases. And of course, I've got the console and the uh, Jaguar game drive flash drive. Let's just take that in there. Um, there is an Atari team tap on the right. Multiplayer adapter. I've not seen that before. I wonder how many games support multi-tap. There is the Retro HQ Jaguar uh, Multicar on the top right there, which I've just got one of those myself to go with the Jaguar, which Tim actually um, donated to me a long time ago. So now I've got that. I've got everything I need, really, to start getting stuck into that um, Jaguar and working out. And especially if the repair service, if it's anything super complicated, I can, I can ask John to help me out with that. Let's carry on. Atari Lynx 2 as well. Lynx 1 or Lynx 2? What's your preference, chat? I think I... I like them both, but I think I lean towards the 1. 1-1, one, one, yeah. Um, a couple of the Reproduction Pro controllers and uh, all of that on the hardware side as well. I've also got the Atari 2800, which is the Japanese version of the Atari 2600. And I've got four of the games for that as well, and they're incredibly rare and quite hard to get hold of. So Oh, I don't remember respringing those games when he came to visit with the 2800, so they're nice to look at. Missile Command, Baseball Raiders of the Lost Ark, and looks like some kind of breakout in space. So uh, really pleased that I managed to find some of those on oh, the old you. Japanese auction sites. Speaking of ill-advised purchases on the Japanese auction sites, I've also got this quite large collection of Famicom stuff. And I've got nice. the robot, which was sold uh, as a Rob here in the West, although it's just called the Family Computer Robot in Japan. So if you're interested in Rob, yeah, I am talking with my mouth full, sorry. Um, check out Ginger Hippie Gaming. If, let's, let's go and find it. Let's go and find it. I've got to show you this if you haven't seen it. It's amazing. Um, where's me? Where's me web browser? There it is. Um, Ginger Hippie Gaming YouTube. Sorry to, uh, to take a tangent off from your video here, Reese, but uh, people need to see this. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. So um, there's this barn. And it has the most insane retro collection in it and this this was part of it a nintendo display here it is that's all retro the roof has collapsed it's covered in pigeon poo but there are some real gems hidden under there <laughs> um i've actually been given from that lot a commodore pc20 which is also covered in bird poo it's in a bin bag at the cave ready for me to make a video about Looks good inside, though. Um, so uh, this is this part two? Because it looks like he's been cleaning it already. We've got the, the Rob and the console look pretty clean. Uh, but he's done a three-part series. There you go. But there's another part to it as well. So he's done a three-part series on this, bringing it up. There's not actually a system in there. It's just a display unit. But I guess you could put a system in there. And then this, Orange John, I hope you're still watching. 
because this is a, a Nintendo display cabinet that you would have had in a shop where you can press game select to switch through all the different cartridges. Uh, this is kind of working, but not working. And he'd like to bring it to the cave as, um, I guess, an example, a, a test example for our workshop to work on or our future repair service. And um, just get some footage of some fun things that we've repaired, fun different things, so that we can put our credentials out there and say, hey, we don't just repair ZX Spectrums, although there'll be a lot of them. We can adapt to pretty much anything. So uh, I think he said it works, but it keeps resetting. Don't worry, he will have cleaned it before we get it. So that's something we can work on in future. And um, and then uh, Ginger Hippie Gaming has agreed that when this is all done, when they've cleared out the work, the warehouse, because they're a little bit nervous about revealing where this warehouse is. They just want to get it cleared out and sorted. Um, and then he's going to come and do a show and tell at the cave. And he's making sure he's getting lots of footage of the disaster zone so that we can go over that when we do the show and tell. Anyway... Had to show you that. Ginger Hippie Gaming. Oh, let's let's post a link as well. Because you might want to go and sub. I'll post a link to that video. Even though I've shown massive spoilers. Copy. Paste. There you go. Okay, let's get back to Reese. Uh, get rid of that. Reese. Please continue, Reese. Um, and I've got the light gun as well, which, uh, unlike the zapper that we got in the Western world, uh, is modelled after a real revolver. Here in this rather sad and neglected corner, I've got the uh, Acorn Archimedes A305, which was the very first Acorn Archimedes. And nice. I've also got the BBC Micro, complete with the Cub Monitor. But that's all I've got for you now, so thank you very much for watching, and uh, on to the next one. <laughs> Let's just leave that face lingering for a moment, shall we? I'll eat my biscuit. <laughs> Thank you, Riz. And I can see in the background there the colouring book of retro computers. Um, speaking of cub monitors, I love a cub monitor. And last week, a chap called Dr. Ian Logan came to the cave. I did show a little bit of it in the, um, the lab video. Very well known in Spectrum Circles. He wrote the book on disassembling the ZX80 ROM all sorts of assembly programming uh, books and things like that. And he donated a bunch of kit, including the Black Cub Monitor, which is exactly the same as the Cream Club Monitor, <laughs> Cub Monitor, but it's black, which looks gorgeous on a ZX Spectrum. And it works. I'm just waiting for an RGB cable for a Spectrum Plus 2 to come out. And then um, I will uh, plug that in. Um, I think there are rarer Cub Monitors, Baz. I'm not sure. But it is actually it's slightly different because the front fascia is a kind of brown color on the on the beige one. And this one also has a black front fascia. Otherwise, it's the same. So thank you, Reese, for that submission. Nice little update. Um, nice to see the new 2800 games added to your collection as well. The next video comes from Protech, who I've seen in the chat. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to make you a little larger, Protech, if you... Will excuse me. I'm just going to. There we go. Expand you. There we go. Hope it didn't hurt. Here we go. Hello, everyone. This is my cave. This is where I listen to music. Oh, floor standing speakers. This is where I make music. This is where he makes music with some nice desktop speakers. Um, there's a lot of speakers in this video already and a fedora hat on the speaker like that. Is that a this checkmate or a daily driver? Yeah. Checkmate with the, uh, the same keyboard. We're keyboard brothers. Look, got my Amiga keyboard too. And I had confirmation that my Amiga tank mouse from that Kickstarter has shipped. So I should have that soon. <laughs> yes, milady, Miss Speaker. Oh, that's a pimped out 500. This is my more fun driver. Uh, with an arcade R joystick, I think that is. More speakers. I do quite a lot of do-it-yourself stuff. And at the moment, I'm making this uh, black version of uh, the tank mouse. That's incredible, incredible skills with the scissors. How do you do that? will hopefully be done soon. 
there we go nice little tour um if you've got a link to any of your music that you make do please feel free to share it and we can have a little listen whittled from baker light with a pair of scissors yeah that's right lee next it's our friend richard shears rich shears uh, richard clap clap in the chat let's have a watch when nina came along hang on hang on you're small as well why has everyone gone small and he's wearing his Knowles Retro Lab T-shirt. Here we go. My wife suggested to me that it'd be perhaps nice if I gave up the small room that was my retro room. I'm daddy for my bedroom. Because <laughs> I was called in the garden set. But then my wife got a little bit frustrated because I was using the dining room table a lot for... Uh, old vintage computers. Why don't you get starts. a little desk for the garage? And so I did. Okay, when I said small desk, you clearly didn't use the same tape measure you did in your dating profile, did you? <laughs> and like my friend and favourite dinosaur, Dave, I found that not having the computers set up ready to go meant I was less likely to play them. And hopefully one day, when I've grown up, my setup will be almost as good as his. I saw something there. We're going to go back and watch this. I just don't want to interrupt it. Thankfully, I've kept my collection under control. As you can see, there's very few here, only the bare minimum. I've only got a few PCs hidden up in the loft. Okay, don't you think you've got enough now? I know you work hard, so you should play hard, but I just wish you could get hard. <laughs> oh yeah, I might have created a bit of a loft in the garage. Yeah, just to hold it one or two more. Savage. What, you bought more vintage computers? E-waster must love you. Oh, and sorry to disappoint, but it felt like the wrong time of year to slip in any Easter eggs. <laughs> oh, Richard, it's good to see one of your videos again. It's been a while. Um, I didn't want to interrupt that because there was a lot going on. I did see something flick up on a screen, so... Let's just have a, when Nina just have a little home, watch again. My wife suggested I, I to me... I just want to pause on some of the machines. It would be perhaps nice if I gave up the small room that was my retro room. I'm daddy for my bedroom. Because I was called in the garden set. But then my wife got a little bit frustrated because I was using the dining room table a lot for uh, old vintage computers. Why don't you get a little desk for the garage? And so I did. Okay, when I said small desk, you... Here we go. That is a nice space. Just enough room to sit in a chair and spin around and, and slide to each one. Hello, the retro. Is that Ravi? Clearly didn't use the same tape measure you did in your dating profile, did you? So we've got the Black A500. I think that's a retro passion sticker on it, maybe. Not sure. Um, what have we got? Speakers. We've got... Um, Got a hard drive on that 500 on the left. Like my friend and favourite dinosaur. Dave. One, two, three, four Gotex. Five, six. There's six Gotex in that frame. <laughs> Dave, I found yeah, that GVP. not having the computer set up ready to go meant I was less likely. We've got the six one two eight with the matching monitor. That one's got four disk drives. You are obsessed with disk drives here. Um, what's Elmo playing on there? Um, some kind of Windows 95 machine. I'm not sure if it's branded. I can see the Energy Star sticker on there. Play them. And hopefully one day. Um, that is another 500 with a, a lovely monitor stand on it. And looks like another GVP or similar hard drive on the left. Oh, no, that's a modern one, isn't it? With the S, uh, the two compact flashes. Remind me what that one's called, because that's um that's a good one. ACA 500 plus, that's it. People rave about them. I haven't got one myself. I when I've grown up, my setup will be... 464 with the GT, is it a 65 or a 64 green screen monitor? The difference being one's got the 12 volt output for the disk drive. The other one hasn't. Almost as good as his. Right, what was that? <laughs> we need to freeze frame. No, missed it. Did anyone else see it? there <laughs> new winter collection it's uh richard alex and i shop now rmc retro store there we go <laughs> uh 
Very good. That one didn't get past me. Almost as good as his. Couple of desktop PCs, um, or should I say Amiga 500 PSU stands. That, hang on, who was that popped up there? Was that Reese? Yes, because it's got the Control Alt Reese badge sticker on the PC. So there you go, there's Reese and there's a little Elmo badge as well at the bottom. We could just make a stream about Easter eggs in Richard's video. There is one of the IBM um, charity PCs that I did years ago. Thankfully, I've kept my collection under control, as you can see. Another nice desktop up there. NetVista, that's the one. Thank you. Um, hang on. Just on the right-hand side, we've got Windows 95, Grand Prix. Oh, a boxed copy of Vista Pro. I've never seen a boxed copy. And a whole bunch of flight simulators and Dungeon Master. A man of taste. A few here, only the bare minimum. I've already got a few PCs hidden up in the loft. Okay, don't you think you've got enough now? I know you work hard, so you should play hard, but I just wish you could get hard. Oh yeah, I might have created a bit of a loft in the garage. Yeah, just to hold it one or two more. What, you bought more vintage computers? E-waster must love you. Oh, and sorry to disappoint, but it felt like the wrong time of year to slip in any Easter eggs. Right, there was something there. Hang on. That was a very quick one. Okay, it's Elmo. <laughs> Breaks. There we go. Thank you, Richard. Um, let's move on now to Pillock, who I know isn't watching today because he's on a family holiday and they've made him go out for a walk in, in the outdoors this morning. So if you're watching this later, um, say hi to Pillock. Hope you had a nice walk. Hello, Pillock here. Welcome to where I make magic happen. This is my workbench. This is where I try and fix things. Sometimes, very occasionally, I manage to fix things. This is my collection of stuff that is lying around for no reason. Sorry, I just had to um, unmod a uh, a message there. So, Pillock's workbench. Here's the CD32 mainboard. Don't know what's wrong with that. Here is my collection of things I hoard for no reason and never use. This is a very mm. honest tour. Games that probably don't work. This is some important things that I don't know how to use. <laughs> Here is something I'm trying to fix. Here is something I've already fixed and hopefully will remain working. These are the machines that I try and use. Oh, so we've got 1500, is that uh, 3000 on the right hand side? These are the machines that I'm just hoarding. <laughs> A2000 tower, box 500. Almost complete CD TV setup. A Mac a that I bought off Naoki and haven't done anything with. An original Checkmate 1500. Nice. An Archimedes that Chrissy made me buy. <laughs> PCs that I no longer know the specs of. A PC that I found at the side of the road. What's that? Ooh, it's a cheeky Atari ST. <laughs> a collection of CRTs. More stuff. I have a problem. <laughs> well, that's the most honest room tour we're going to have today. Um, health and safety is a concern watching that. I think I've seen the future. And uh, Pillock, Pillock goes uh, between those two racks. I think that's, that's uh, how he's going to meet his demise if he's not careful. Don't stack the towers so high. Okay. Um, somebody says, uh, Vicky says, <laughs> Pillock could do with some new blinds. Straighten your blinds out, Pillock. Uh, I think that might be the least of his concerns in that room. Um, yeah, I realised as I was as I was saying it, Co-Sam, that it was going to be twisted in that direction. <laughs> Next up, it's Paul, a.k.a. Pajaco. Let's see what Paul's got for us. Hi everyone, this is my turn to show off my cave and my kit. It's a little bit messy in here because this is where I work from home and do a lot of my electronics work. Believe it or not, I've actually had a tidy up recently. And breathe. This is going to be rapid fire from Paul. 
I've got some other bits and pieces dotted all over the house, so I'd like to show you some of it. Hopefully some of it will be interesting to you. Some of it will be like, what? But it's interesting to me, so let's dig in, see what I've got. So starting with this overcrowded display, I'm gonna pull out this Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. First, it has all the feelies now, but when I bought it, it was missing the badge and I waited chuffing years for it to show up on eBay. And a few more interesting things to look at. Engage oh, Sonic okay. the Hedgehog covering up my Tommy Caveman. Love this Atari Ashtray, it's from Sunnyvale, California, and nice. I also picked up this promotional lighter. This is my Oh Mummy collection. I think this is all of the cassette variants, including the Computers Links and the Spanish Amstrad versions. I've got a signed Specky inlay, and I'm still on the hunt for the Tatung Einstein version. Make your own lampshade kit, and I chose Arcade Marquees. An Apple One clone, a homemade working power supply for it, my scope tricks, and my heat gun and my moo gun. <laughs> Have a I picked these cards up at a Thimbleweed Park launch event. I got to meet Ron Gilbert and cool. I got his autograph. Cool. That's good. I was lucky enough to meet Bob Wakelin once and he signed this for me. They even had game patches in the 80s. You're not funny. Some really cool <laughs> arcade tokens from the World's Fair in Knoxville in 1982. And who hasn't accidentally bought two of the same thing? Some arcade marquees in a light-up picture frame. Look how thin that thing is. Whoa. Oh, run out of time. Super speed for the rest. 90 <laughs> seconds is never enough time thanks for watching there we go i didn't want to talk because there was so much going on there and uh let's just pause on one Hi of everyone, the this is shelves i wanted to see yes that is neil's wood paul won that um at a patron day where he got a high score he also won that nintendo roulette next to it genuine nintendo uh, roulette from the 70s i think that is and um that is a bit of wood from K4.0 when we clad it. So there you go. That is genuinely my wood. Uh, here, I just wanted to have a little look here. There's a Trevor the Tortoise. There's some S... Well, that's Paul did show me that S3 case, I think, once. CD holder at the top back. And then he's got his own mummy collection. Yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I've looked many times at starting to collect Infocom games and try and get a nice set, but that is not a cheap collection to get involved in. Uh, far better going for something like the Oh Mummy collection. There we go. So nearly every copy of Oh Mummy except for the Tatung Einstein. Is that one on the right? That's the MSX with a completely different cover. Um, I had it on my Amstrad and all my friends had it on their Spectrums, but... I don't remember it being a particularly good game, if I'm honest. But it's a collection you can maybe complete. Thank you, Paul. Let's go to Lee in his workshop. More fun making it. Here we go. Oh, Paul, Paul's there in the chat. They've cleaned up. Welcome to my workshop. Hello. I grew this workshop from the husk of an empty garage into the wonderful thing you see before you today. Can I just say the uh, the lighting, the editing... The, um, yeah, the, the, the film in here is, is of a high standard. And I use the word grew in a very literal sense. Hang on, hang on. That was, a, that was a turn to camera. Here we go. Watch this. This is slick. And I use the word grew slick. in a very literal sense. When I first used this as a place to make things decades ago now, all I had at this end here was an old door nailed to a few bits of wood and attached to the wall as a cheap work surface. Workshops evolve and are never a finished thing. If you take that into account, the growing pains will be easier. This used to be my office games VR room, right? Sorry to pause it. Just having a little look. Nice tower with the obligatory side off of it. Uh, nice CRT. Nice. Let's continue. Right up until the space lurgy struck in March of 2020, I started making a few things from wood to pass the time. To help with this, I started collecting tools along the way. After making this workbench, I built a bar top arcade for my great nephews and niece, which turned out far better than I imagined. Beaten gade. Nice. That's hand painted artwork on the side. After building another bar top Ooh. for my neighbor and then a pinball table for myself and having discovered and watched many a trash to treasure, I wanted to have a crack at this repairing electronics lark myself. So I built another workbench over here and started putting together bit by bit. Hang on, that was too slick by half again. Look, over here. Let's let's do that cut away again. Lark myself. Love the pinball. So I built another workbench over here over and here. started putting together bit by bit the tools and knowledge I would need. I couldn't be without this workshop. Through some tough times, this place has kept me just this side of sane. 
I truly treasure it. Same. Really? That's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> and a lovely finish there. Well done. Lovely dismount. Um, yeah, I love Lee's workshop and the pinball table is, is great. And uh, we shared the link earlier. So do go and follow More Fun Making It and uh, the mic stand. What is that mic, Lee? Because you get lovely sound out of that mic. Lovely finish and dismount. That's right, Kosam. A Yeti. It's a Yeti of some form. Nice. Okay, thank you, Lee. Next up, we've got Chris. Chris with a K. What's Chris got for us? Hi, kids. Okay, it's Chris here. Welcome to my house of DIY. Yes, no <laughs> flooring at all. Nothing prepared. What was the kids' bedroom is now a storeroom. What's my workroom is now oh, another storeroom. For those who don't know, Chris is a regular on our Discord chat server and uh, has been posting updates of all his DIY. Right. So this is where he is Boxes with it. His flooring. Yes. I've been busy networking and DIYing and making my house the future. <laughs> and now living in space. This is a perfect preparation installation for being out of space and in the future. Genuinely, my five-year-old is very unhappy that the floor is not going to stay like this. <laughs> I would be too. I'd love it to stay gold. So now I have to get her something gold. I love gold. Apparently. Well, there you go. As I said, networking. I've been able to route my networking cables down. Are network cables retro yet? Down a pit, which is here, which is covered over, down to my living room where I can nag my network. Link aggregation. Yes, the future is there as well. Amazing. And anyway. Less of my DIY, which I've been breaking myself over. Kit. I came by colour. Oh, nice. Look at it. It's amazing. Enjoy. <laughs> That's Neil. Bye-bye. <laughs> he just wanted to show off his DIY, didn't he? The Game Boy feels like it was thrown in at the end. Thank you, Chris. I hope you're making good progress this weekend and you get that all finished up soon. Um... Uh, Video Castada says that Game Boy has a distinct lack of colour. Uh, Philip says, I still have my entertainment centre hardwired. Yeah, I ran a network cable up the stairs um, or under the floorboards and upstairs a couple of months back uh, because I was using a Powerline Ethernet kit and I am very lucky to have fibre internet here on my street. It's now running at, just got upgraded to 600 meg and it, my my power line ethernet was slower than my internet connection which is something i never thought i'd hit but we hit it so i i ran some cat six cable lovely okay our next one is from jessica let's see what jessica's got for us hello neil and hello my fellow cave dwellers my name is jessica banister pierce and this is actually my tech department uh it's very oh is this jess who's in the chat i think it is jess's tech department very inspired by you, Neil. Um, your dulcet tones and tweed jacketry and murder gloves got me through <laughs> lockdown one, two, and three here in Austria. Because, oh, yes, good. I live in Austria, as you can tell from my beautiful Welsh, Welsh accent. And, um, yeah, so I thought I'd just show you around very quickly. Um, because I only have a minute and a half, and I've already wasted half it. So here's some Macs. Um, nice. I have, a, G I have a lot of Macs. I, I, I don't know why they find me. Um, there are also a bunch here of... Ataris, so we have a 520, a 5, a 21040s. This one is needs work, and an Amiga 500, which which is holding them all up, the the foundation for the Atari STs. Well, I don't want to talk about that one. There's also some more you know, Apple stuff, vintage stuff. We also have a bunch of 8-bit machines, iMax, lots of iMax, PowerMax, all all the PowerMax, and some Dreamcast and other consoles in there. A workbench, where I allegedly fix things. More nice. iMacs. Oh, nice boxes. I remember unboxing one of those when the iMacs came, iMac came out. I had to install some in an office. I haven't seen that box since then. That's nice. I'm currently working on this machine. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk about that one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a little retro area there. There's a ZX Spectrum. We've got Mega Drive 2, Super Nintendo, Xbox, 
and a PlayStation. Oh, and a Master System up high. Nice. Where I keep all my cool old stuff that hooks up to that TV. And then finally, we have the display items. So Ooh. that's the tech department. Hang on, hang on. Let's see the display items. You can't just go... Uh, there we go. So we got the, the lamp Mac, top left. Is that a Mac Mini? There's the the very small, the micro um, uh, Game Boy in the middle there, which I don't think ever came out here. Uh, there's an iMac down there. A pink iMac. A G4 Cube Mac. Sorry, it's not a Mac Mini, is it? It's a Cube. Yeah, I can, now you've said it, I can see the dimensions of it. <clears throat> I didn't see the side of it there. Nice. Let's carry on. Display items. So that's the tech department. All that's left to say is, Neil, thank you very much for being an inspiration to me. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to open my own visitor attraction cave in the next two years. Cheers. Super. Um, yeah, Jesse in Austria uh, has emailed me on, or messaged me on Discord a few times, just sort of scoping out the idea of um, progressing, opening her own museum her own public cave over in austria so i'm um, always happy to help and support that however i can let's keep talking and spreading the word and maybe there'll be a future video from you one day where you can give us the tour of uh, what you've opened up and created next is chris chris's cave tour <laughs> um 90 second cave oh no it's this chris it's this chris right we're down in australia it's it's my co-host from this week in retro Oh, sorry, Jess. <laughs> Thank you for the video, Jess. It was good. It was good. Um, hello, James, the Civitas Universe. <laughs> um, 90 second cave tour, as you say. Um, that will teach me for not reading an email properly. Sorry, Neil. Good, um, good t-shirt. But, okay, let's do it. 90 seconds. I'll pan you around the room, basically. Thank you, Dean. So I'll get behind the camera so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, but this is the corner you're, most people will be most familiar with, and these are all genuinely set up roughly Electron. like this but Mega. often obviously the um plus three exposure is uh the a1200 is is generally there with the plus three pushback maybe the a1200 will go there if i'm using it more than the 500 and do i need both i don't know uh well I, I i need to keep both but i can't use them both at once is what i'm saying um at the moment the a1200 is down there next to a pc um which generally sits in another room um but that was because i was doing a comparison um, I see in the middle there at the top, you've got a boxed copy of, I think that's Shadow of the Beast 1. Bit of a grail item for me is the big box Shadow of the Beast, um, providing it's got the t-shirt because it came with a bundled t-shirt and you need that for the, the complete box. And um, I managed to get last week, it's in the post, it's on its way, new old stock Shadow of the Beast 2. Two. I haven't got Shadow of the Beast 1, but I've got the new old box, Shadow of the Beast 2, in that long box form with the T-shirt, and the T-shirt is still sealed in its original bag. Ah, I'm going to have to put that in um, a glass cabinet for visitors to see with... with um, Hang on, the box can't be sealed. Sorry, uh, the T-shirt is sealed. The box is not sealed, but it's new old stock, because if it was sealed, you wouldn't know there was a T-shirt in there, would you? So I'm going to put that in a glass cabinet for people to see, along with a whole bunch of other Psygnosis games. The T-shirt is an extra large, Tim. I think it only ever came in an extra large. I don't think you ever had a choice of T-shirt size. Um, yeah. But just pan you up, um, which you can't see there. Behind there is, well, you tell me what you see behind there. Nope, can't get the exposure on that. Sorry about that. There's a couple of black consoles sitting down there. This is why he podcasts and doesn't film. <laughs> um, so extra points for identifying both of those. Panning up. This is Batman there. pack, which I know he loves. Up to some other childhood memories, basically. And all the way up to there, other childhood memories, but, you know, the importance of keeping boxes oh we're running out of time flashback on the main tv there and over there 2600 and n64 dvd oh that's the part of the room i've never seen before i don't get to see that when we're doing the podcast so this is dvd player n64 nice a little a little hi-fi um bookcase hi-fi and vhs player sitting in the nintendo not corner there you go bye <laughs> thank you chris nice to see the cave nice to see you here and next, it's our friend Byron, Hasbeard Plays Games. Let's have a little watch. 
All right, let's give you the tour. Starting right. with physical media. No nonsense. All right, let's give you the tour. Let's go. All right, let's give you All the right. tour. Starting with physical media, because I'm one of those weirdos. Sorry, the light isn't very good over here. Oh, I see Max Payne. Sam and Max. Sam and Max. Moving on, here we see a collection of CRTs, which all work perfectly, but rarely ever get any use. Hang on, how do they not get much use when you've got a Mr. Multi system on the right-hand side there? They should be on all the time. I think that's the same 32-inch TV that we have in the cave. Um, Byron does volunteer at the cave sometimes as well, so I get to hang out with him. It is a heavy beast. Yeah, you don't There's also this weird thing. Oh, there it is. I don't is. know what that is. Amazing. Modern Ooh, stuff. That's a nice we don't setup. really care about that. Hang on. That's a nice setup. Nice curved screen. Uh, what's your uh, monitor configuration chat? Because I have one landscape, 24-inch landscape monitor in front of me. And then to the right, I have a portrait monitor. So I have them side by side, landscape and portrait. But Byron there's gone for the landscape, landscape, top and bottom. Yeah. But if there are any keyboard nerds out there, Same. this keyboard, the Glove 80, if you can touch type, that is the most comfortable thing you'll ever put your hands on, though. Pricey at $400. $400? Lego. Bonus points. More Lego. Saturn Arcade 5. sticks. PS2. Xbox. Yes, I've sorted out the clock capacitor. There you go. PlayStation, Xbox, Saturn. All there. Boxes of stuff, which includes my original PlayStation. More boxes of stuff. Be a machine without any kegs. <laughs> More boxes of stuff. And uh... cleaning and lubrication. Ooh, that's a fun one. <laughs> and lastly, by no means least, my Atari STE all the way the hell up here which I've had since Christmas 1989. It was going so No, that's well. not the box for it. That, there is an STFM in there. But that's mine, and you'll have to pry it from my cold, dead fingers. Oh, that's nice. Are you missing a key there, Byron, on the top right of your numeric keypad? The, uh, the star and the slash, or the plus... Yeah, star and the slash, I think, go up there? Or is it a plus and minus? I can't remember. Back to you, Neil. Are you are you looking for the keys? Do you need the keys? Can anyone help Byron with his missing keys? He is missing the... <laughs> Just getting a link to Byron's channel. Here we go. So Byron has... Ooh, 1,118 uh, subscribers. No, sorry, 1,180 subscribers. Here is a link in the chat. Go and give him a big hug by clicking on that and clicking on subscribe. I'm going to do it as well with the This Week in Retro account. And uh, there you go. Give him a little hug. Okay, thank you, Byron. Next up, we've got uh, we've got three more. It's my learned friend. Oh, no, we've got two more, sorry. It's my learned friend next. David, who I saw in the chat earlier. Working from home means that I have a study that doubles as my cave. And yes, it is Piano. a cable management nightmare before any of you ask. Here we have my Dreamcast, which is modded with the GDMU optical drive emulator. We've also installed it's a right. replaceable battery. Here's my Saturn, which has got a Fenrir in it and nice. a 50 60 hertz switch inspired by Mark Fix's stuff. This is a Japanese N64 with an EverDrive 64 and an RGB mod. All of the mods, all of the mod cons, this is designed to be played. A uh, GameCube with an SD mod running Swiss. A mail bombed Wii with an external hard drive. A much underrated stock Wii U. And the modern stuff, a Switch, a PS5 and an Xbox Series X. E everything. Turn the corner to the musical corner with a piano dedicated to Neil's playing. <laughs> and the Hammerbeat models, which I discovered in lockdown, is perfect for pixel art. Yeah, nice. And they give away really my love of all things PC. Which is dealt with here by a custom-built emulation PC for MAME and anything complicated. And a mister. Very a naked nice. mister, mind. I wonder if anyone sells a case for that. <laughs> and that projects onto a big TV. 
and that means I can do this. Now I'm very lucky to have all of that but you'll notice nothing really bulky or complicated or very old that needs constant maintaining. I think things like that are better in places like the cave and that's one of the reasons I'm so proud to be a patron. Back to Neil in the There studio. he is. <laughs> yes. Working. Um, when we first had the first public cave day. There it is. That was David's reaction as he came. I think he was maybe the first through the door into the cave on the first public day. So that was his reaction. It was the perfect YouTube, YouTube thumbnail face. There we go. He was very proud. Awesome. Um, and now we've got Costado, who is also in the chat. Yeah, lovely setup. Designed to be played. All of the conveniences to just sit down, switch it on, choose a game from an SD card. You don't even have to get up to pick a game off the shelf and away you go. I like it. Here's a short video on the state of my collection. Let's... Uh... Let's make your face bigger, Costado. There we go. Hang on, did you say here's a short video instead of my collection? What What are you going to show us? Uh, yes, Jez. Um, it seems to have restricted your channel name. Let me just let me just look it up. Is it Jess Tech Department? Te yeah. Let's have a look. Jess B's Tech Department. Is that you? That looks like you. If it's not you, we're, we're going to share it anyway. <laughs> there you go. There's Jess, who we had a tour of um, a few videos back with 64 subscribers. I mean, 64 is a good number. Why would you want to move off of 64 subscribers? I think I think we keep it at 64. Who's going to go and ruin that? Oh, Sorry, it's gone up to 66. Someone's ruined that sub count. Um, yeah, go click on that. And maybe when Jess gets her public cave open, give it a watch. Yeah, 64 is perfect. Maybe we should unsubscribe, get you back to 64. <laughs> Here we go. Right, Costado, what are you going to show us? Short video on the state of my collection. Somebody asked for it. Here you go. Have fun. Uh, the stack of uh, retro PCs on my kitchen table has grown by about one pvm also i maybe <laughs> added a few more vectrex homebrew titles i do like the vectrex oh castado when you were here the other week did you pick up the vectrex okay were you here when the guy was showing the vectrex game off no you weren't you weren't that was the week after there was a guy who came to the arcade archive with a new vectrex game he'd made and he made a dedicated arcade cabinet with a vectrex in it it was gorgeous it was a cocktail cabinet um and I may or may not have added a few light guns. Whoops. The Famicom collection has entered its second basket. Look at those pretty <laughs> colors. Who doesn't love uh, Famicom? Isn't it the best MMS ever? <laughs> okay. So Costado has the only custard yellow multi-system in the world. And he's also got the video custard cartridge, which is coming soon. I mean, it doesn't get more custody than that. Yes, I think so too. And of course, I got an analog pocket. It's awesome. And what I said about collecting loose games, the PC Engine collection has entered its third binder. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, this is the latest Money Pit tabletop VFD Hi, games. Oh, they're a lot of fun. Look at that. I've collected quite a number of them uh, already. Uh, unfortunately, the cabinet is full. Oh, is there, is there a tabletop game you're looking for, Costado, in particular? Well, I can always put those boxes in the shredder. What? But slowly the house is uh, <laughs> being overrun uh, with, uh, with uh, Lego uh, and with, with MMSs. Here is my second MMS, the nice orange one. So that's the Dutch orange as well. Two, two one-of-a-kind MMSs. So that's about it. Like I said, more stuff. But the house isn't quite full yet, so <laughs> there's still room for a little more. Thanks. Bye-bye. We don't stop until the house is full. Fantastic. Well, that's all of our viewer-submitted videos for this week, so thank you, everyone. Um, a good selection. Um, some friendly faces, regular faces, and some new faces as well, so it's nice to see you all. Uh, Reese did submit an extra video. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know whether I should play it or not. So he used ChatGPT to to have a fairy tale story made about me, and then I stupidly on Discord because I was doing some voiceover at the time narrated it, and now he's made it into a video. <laughs> So I'm going to play it. I'm going to take the opportunity to have a quick bathroom ba break. Do the same if you want to. And then I'll be back and I'll just leave it playing for you. Once upon a time in the quaint village of Stroud, nestled deep within the hills of the English countryside, there lived a mysterious and enigmatic man known as the Stroud Man. Stroud Man was not an ordinary man, for he possessed a unique gift that had long been a legend in the village. He was believed to have the power to summon all retro computers to his enchanted cave, hidden among the hills using the mystical power of Tweed. For generations, the people of Stroud had marvelled at the magic of the Stroud Man. Clad in his vibrant Tweed suit, which had been passed down through his family, he would dance gracefully through the village. As he did so, he would play a haunting melody on his ancient silver flute, with the tunes resonating throughout the village. As the magic notes filled the air, something incredible would happen. The old, forgotten and discarded retro computers of the village would spring to life. They would stir from their slumber in attics, cellars and dusty storage rooms. With their circuits and processors humming, these machines would rise and make their way to Stroudman, as if under a spell. A parade of retro computers would then form behind Stroudman, their lights blinking and buzzing in tune with the music. Apple II, Commodore 64, Atari 800, ZX Spectrum and countless others would wobble, glide and march in harmony, drawn by the enchanting power of Stroudman's tweed. With a procession of computers following him, Stroudman would lead them to a hidden cave deep within the hills. This cave, shrouded in secrecy, was known as the Enchanted Cave of Wonders. Its walls were adorned with delicate and mysterious runes, which glowed softly in the dim light. Upon entering the cave, the retro computers would find their new home, bathed in the magical aura of the Tweed. Here they would live in harmony with Stroudman as their guardian and caretaker. The cave was a haven for those old machines, a place where they would be protected from the ravages of time and the relentless march of technological progress. Stroudman dedicated his life to the preservation of these once revered machines, and the cave became a living museum, a testament to the history of computing. It was said that within the enchanted cave, the retro computers would gather and converse, sharing their stories and knowledge with one another. As the years went by, people from far and wide travelled to Stroud to witness the remarkable phenomenon of the Stroud Man and his enchanted cave of retro computers. Many left in awe, marvelling at the tale they would pass down to future generations. A tale of a man who, through the power of Tweed, preserved the rich legacy of the early days of computing. And so, the legend of Stroud Man lived on, inspiring curiosity and wonder in the hearts of those who heard his remarkable tale. The end. <laughs> Lovely finish and dismount. Thank you, Co Sam. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so the story was generated by ChatGPT, and I think resources are used AI to generate the images. So uh, it probably, yeah, there you go. He used um, Bing slash Dali. Now, it probably wouldn't take much to get AI to generate my voice as well and narrate it. So there you go. It should be in a loop in the cave. Maybe as you come up the stairs or in the toilets, you can listen to it in the toilet. Okay, so thank you everyone for submitting your videos. We've got a quiz now. So this uses an add-on for Twitch called Quizkit. Quizkit uh, sometimes struggles on mobile devices. Uh, you can still sort of participate by shouting out the answers, but if you're at a desktop computer, the answers will come up on you. You can click on them, it will keep score. And uh, is there a prize for the winner? Um, no, there's no prize for the winner, but prestige. It's based on this. 1990 slash 89 magazine insert which was a quiz 
it's a um, it's biased slightly towards British questions. But here we go. Um, how do I make this work? I'll click on quiz kit. We can do a quick test quiz first as well to make sure it's all working for you. So I'm going to click on a ready-made quiz. First of all, we'll go for a general trivia. And then I'm going to press start quiz. Just tell me, is it appearing on the screen for you? Are you seeing, are you seeing something? So if you're watching this back on my second channel when I upload it, you won't see anything on the screen, so I'll try and be as verbo ver verbose as possible with the questions and answers. If I This isn't the quiz, this is just a test. So I press start. I'll read the question. In which sports are try and conversion methods of screwing points? You'll have 30 seconds per question. You click on your answer. The quicker that you answer... Thanks, Pete. The quicker you answer, the more points you get. But if you get it wrong, you lose points, I think. So speed and accuracy. Uh, when we do the quiz proper, please don't shout out the answers in the chat. And then I reveal the answer. It was, of course, rugby. 33 of you got that right. One went for fencing, two went for squash. And then come on, you get to see the answers. Then I press show scores, and then you can see a very imaginatively named gentleman there was the quickest. My learned friend was third. Kosan was fifth. Now, if you're showing up in the scoreboard as contestant number 75, like fourth places, um, I think you have to... Hang on, can you help me in chat? You have to click on something, don't you, to, to give it permission to use your name. <laughs> okay, so let's end, let's end the quiz. And now we're going to do the quiz proper. Here we go. It's working for you on Android. That's great. Well, what, what I like to do is um, have quiz kit on my phone while streaming to the television. But sometimes it gets out of sync. I'm working on an iPhone. Okay, ready quiz people. Let's go. The quiz mega mag. Start quiz. There's 20 questions. Here we go. Yeah, nothing will show on Twitch unless you've got the add-on enabled, Dean. I'm now going to press start game. Which game spent a record length of time at number one this year, 1989? Was it Robocop, Rambo 3, Untouchables or Short Circuit? Chris is on his PC to answer these now. He's getting right into it. It's your time to shine, Chris. Oh, I've got a DM from ProTech. I've just seen that, ProTech. Thank you. So ProTech mentioned he makes music and he gave us the tour with his room with all the speakers. I've just put a link to his YouTube channel in chat if you want to give him a sub. So which game uh, spent a record length at number one? It was, of course, Robocop. 42 of you got that. Three went for Rambo 3, two for The Untouchables, and one went for Short Circuit. Ah, uh, sorry, Chris. Robocop was huge and Retro or Bust was the quickest. Mean Machine Dean was up there, Costado, Darkstar, Togsters up there. But it can all change very quickly, this game. Let's go to the next question. What is the sequel to Operation Wolf Gold? Operation Stealth, Operation Rolling Thunder, Operation Thunderbolt, Operation Desert Storm. Pump 
the music up a bit for some suspense. Operate just operation, Costado. Um, oh, we've got 124 people watching us. Thank you to Ghost Rider, Trogs, and Angus Hodge for following. If you're not already following me on Twitch, do please press the follow button. That would be fantastic. I don't have the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire music, sorry. Uh, the answer was Operation Thunderbolt. 32 of you got that. 10 took the bait for Rolling Thunder. Seven Desert Storm, two Operation Stealth. I'm not sure which I liked better, Operation Wolf or Thunderbolt. I think I played Wolf more. I need to give Thunderbolt more of a chance. Um, oh, Mr. Lurch. <laughs> Away from keyboard, he's already making the excuses for his score. Ian was quickest there. And Ian is top of the scoreboard. Me Machine Dean's moved up to second. Dean is a competitive man. He's going to be wanting this. A question. What is Gradius better known as in UK arcades? Giga Wing, Silkworm, Nemesis or R-Type? Remember, these are all genuine questions from my magazine. I didn't write these. I just typed them in. And also in the quiz is this fantastic poster. Chris will like this. It's a Ferrari. I'm not sure who's driving that, if it's Senna or Prost or Mansell. Who's driving? Doesn't say. And it's got electronic arts on it as well. Looks like Senna. Um, oh, I should reveal the answer. It was Nemesis. Oh, that split you. 21 went for Nemesis, 16 went for R-Type. Six for Silkworm, six for Gigawing. Ah, Vicky was quick. And Paul was second there on that particular. Oh, hello, Paul Kitchen. He was there in fifth. Ian retains the top spot. Oh, Dean, Dean, you're not even in the top 10. Where have you gone, Dean? Told you it could all change quickly. Next question. Which game stars Tiki the Kiwi? New Zealand Story, Sentinel, Ninja Scooter Simulator, or Toki? Is it Toki or Toki? This game was on a cover disc of issue one of a particular magazine back in the day I enjoyed the demo so much that I got a pirated copy of it just waiting for the last clicks which doesn't involve Chris because he's frustratedly <laughs> unable to click on anything the answer was New Zealand story yeah pretty much all of you got that one of you went for Sentinel. Not Neil Zealand story, Mumbai King. He's got a good memory as Mumbai. What was the quiz thing you had? Um, it's called the... Hang on, hang on, Paul. If I tell you that, you're going to go off to archive.org and look it up. Nearly got me. Ian was the quickest again. Ian, how are you so quick? And Ian retains the top spot, followed by Pajaco, Dave Corbett... Vicky, Pixel Vixen, Video Costado, TBK, Retro Bus, Technic UK, and Tim. Um, I have put the questions in in a random order, so even if someone has found the publication, they're still going to have to look it up. How many different screens are there in Donkey Kong? Four, six, eight, three. How many different screens in Donkey Kong? Um, good. Oh, yeah. Which version? Well, I mean, I didn't write the questions. <laughs> I didn't write the questions. I just typed them in. But 
Yeah, there's differences between the Japanese version and the US version, isn't there? I'm pretty sure Alex has told me that in the past. Well, the answer that it's given me is four. 21 of you went for that, which was the most. 11 went for six, 11 went for three, and uh, three went, f sorry, yeah, three went for eight. Oh no, it's Bonnie Tyler all over again, isn't it? If anyone remembers the Bonnie Tyler quiz question. For anyone who doesn't, we have a mashup music round on some of the quizzes. Not this time, sorry, but in the past. And uh, there was a question, there was a music round asking who it was. It was a Bonnie Tyler song, but it was sung by Glee. And everybody hated me because the answer was Glee and not Bonnie, Bonnie Tyler. <laughs> yeah, people in chat, see, they haven't forgotten. We will never forgive. <laughs> Next question. Oh, hang on, I haven't shown the scores. Oh, Ian wasn't the quickest there. Retro or Bust was the quickest. Oh, I think Ian must have got that wrong or, or skipped an answer because he's dropped all the way from first to eighth. And Pajaco Paul goes first. Vicky moves up to fourth. Castano moves up to third. Okay, next question. Which character did Ultimate make famous in such games as Night Law, Underworld, and Saber Wolf? Was it Saber Man, Monty Mole, Sonic the Hedgehog, or Trevor the Tortoise? I imagine that's an easier one for those who grew up in the UK. And fake Australians like Chris. Jackie says, I'm doing better than I normally do at Ashen's quizzes. Well, remember these magazines were written for, you know, teenagers and kids at the time, this particular magazine. But then it assumes you are in 1989, 1990. Yeah, 48 of you got Saberman, two went for Monty Mole, one went for Trevor the Tortoise. Paul retains the top spot. Not much movement in the top 10 after that. My learned friend lingering in ninth. Let's scroll down. We, let's scroll down to the bottom. Ghost Rider has minus 66,761 points. That in itself is quite impressive. Mr. Lurch, 40th. Orin, 44th. The Retro Hour, 25th. Lee, more fun making it, 24th. Dean, Me Machine Dean, 20th. Oh, Dean. After such a strong start. Here's the next question. The pattern is full Ghost Rider, yeah. Name the evil wizard you battle in Barbarian and Barbarian 2. Drax, Clax, Terramex, Anthrax. Um... Amazing Pillock, thank you for subscribing. He says, hello, I'm on mute. I can't hear you as I'm in a cafe. Feel free to say, say something deeply offensive for when I watch this back later. I couldn't say anything offensive to you, Pillock, but I hope you're having a nice lunch and uh, I hope your walk is going well. Yeah, people enjoyed your video. It was the, the most honest video of all the tours. The answer was Drax. Six of you went for Clax, which was an Atari game. Um, did Clax have two X's in the game? I can't remember now. Uh, Terramex was a game which was on some 8-bits and the Acorn Archimedes. And Anthrax is Anthrax. Yeah, there's probably a game by that name. Darwin 79 was the quickest on that one. Pajaco retains the lead. Ian is sliding up to seventh. There's Dean. I'm keeping an eye on Dean. Can't even see him anymore. 
I think he's rage quit. I think me Machine Dean has rage quit. Cats and dogs living together. Thank you so much for subscribing. Okay, next question. There are 20 in total. How many tracks are there in hard driving? Two, six, four, one. How many tracks in hard driving? I used to play this down at Weymouth Seafront in the arcade. Silky smooth in the arcade. I only had one monitor in the one I played. I think there are triple screen, triple monitor versions of it. Um, it was the first time I had to work out how to use a clutch. Hello, scum buddy. Welcome. We played it in Swanage. That wasn't far from me either, Swanage. Always be careful when you put a postcode in on a sat-nav to get to Swanage because it will take you to the wrong side of Pool Bay and a chain ferry. And if the ferry's not running, it's a long detour. Um, okay, the answer is... Two! Yeah. There's the, the speed track, isn't there, and the stunt track, and that's it. So only nine of you got that. 18 of you went for four tracks. So that has split the pack. Oh, look who's back at number one. Ian is back in the top spot. Uh, Paul has, I think Paul got it right. Pajaka got it right, but slower than Ian. Dave Corbett's second, Retro Robust is fourth. Vicky's fifth. Barry's down in sixth. Owen's in seventh, David's in eighth, and Paul Kitchen's slid up to ninth. Enjoy your sausage pillow. Next question. What is Russian attack better known as in the UK arcades? Green Beret, Commando, POW, Puzzle Bobble. This is one that I didn't learn until I was an older teen, had a different name outside of the UK. I always knew it as we knew it here. Dante says, I always preferred stunts, aka 4D sports driving. Yeah, that was a great game. Lovely track editor in that game as well. And also, it's got some really annoying copy protection. So if you don't have the manual to put in the right word, um, you can drive for about 10 meters and then your windscreen just cracks and your car dies. Just teases you. The answer is Green Beret or Green Burt. 37 of you got that. Five went for Commando. Uh, Ian says, I'm sure there was an 80s movie with Russian attack arcade machines in, but I can't remember which one. Retro or Bust was quickest on that one. Ian is the first to break 200,000 points and retains the top spot. Let's go into question 10. We're about halfway through the quiz now. Um, the people in the top 10. Yeah, you're doing well. Jess's tech department is in 15th. This is very competitive. Could be anyone's game. Next question. Who makes the Stun Runner and Hard Driving arcade games? Sega, Namco, Atari, Williams. Hard Driving again. What other good games were there, like Hard Driving? Uh, 40 Sports Driving is the obvious one, or Stunts. There was a uh, Stun Runner arcade in the same arcade in Weymouth as the Hard Driving arcade. I did prefer Hard Driving, but Stun Runner also was nice and smooth, and it was just impressive to see 3D stuff. Stun Runner, I guess you're getting into games like Wipeout before you see something similar. Um, there were games, I think there's a whole genre of arcade games called tube shooters, but it's not really a tube shooter. It's more like Tempest. Yeah, 33 of you got that. Atari, six went for Namco, four for Sega, two for Williams. Days of Thunder, Ghost Rider, get out. Days of Thunder was not a good game back in the day. Unless, unless you're talking about the film. 
Still not a great film, but it's better than the game. Controller, Reese, of course he was quickest with an Atari answer. Of course he was. Oh, there is, it's so close in the top 10. Especially the top five. Top six, top seven, top seven. Rubbing his racing. Cold trickle. Next question. In which game do you guide Sir Arthur the Knight into battle against the Devil's Army? Salamander, Berserk, Gauntlet, Ghosts and Goblins. Powerdrome, I always remember, had really impressive screenshots in the magazines. I thought, that looks cool. That looks a lot like Stun Runner. Yeah, you're right. But it, it didn't really have the frame rate. Maybe I should go back and try it on an accelerated Amiga. Oh no, Lee's been thwarted by the adverts popping up at the bottom of the screen. Shock him. The answer is Ghosts and Goblins. 47 of you got that. Four went for Gauntlet, one went for Salamander. Yeah, that was pretty easy, I think. But who was quickest? All your base Chris Retro. He was the quickest on that one. Ian's still the top. I, you, I know you're going to slip up, Ian. I know you're going to slip up. You've got so many people snapping at your heels. Okay, next question. Question 12. Who makes the CPC 464? Amstrad, Sinclair, Acorn, Tatung. Yeah, Ghosts and Goblins was a brutal game. Alex at the Arcade Archive had it as his game of the month, his high score challenge last month, and I learned so much. I can fairly easily get through to level three now, whereas before I was always struggling on level one. But, then, you know, it's still a brutal game, and I haven't figured out level three yet. But level three is where the first spot is where you can uh, spawn farm. There's a, per a spot you can stand in. Loads of zombies will come you can really farm the points and that racks up lots of extra lives um come on you all know the answer to this 52 of you went for amstrad one of you went for sinclair i don't know if you thought it was a, a, a trick question or if you're just going for the worst score possible oh pajaco you've slid down dave corbett's taking your place again Vicky Pixel Vixen is consistently in fifth. And before we move on, bear with. Look to make up. There we go. We've given everyone else's channel a shout out. There is a link to Vicky's channel. Pixel Vixen in Japan, click it, click subscribe, and you can follow um, Vicky's artistic talents, but also her journey into living in Japan. You, you must have been there for over a year now. Um, yeah, go follow Vicky's life, the ups, the downs. Where's my quiz kit gone? I've lost my quiz kit. Uh, next question. Okay, here we go. What would you stick into a Commodore 1541? Steady now. Finger, cassette, cartridge, disc. Just to reiterate, I don't write the questions or the answers. I took them from the magazine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a slice of cheese says byron you've probably heard alex's story then alex at the arcade hates cheese and when he was a kid he used to be given slices of cheese and he would put them in the slots at the back of the 
family TV set. Until one day the TV stopped working, and when the repairman came out, he found it was full of melted cheese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 47 of you went for disc 3 for cartridge, 4 for cassette Reese was quickest on that one and not much change on the scoreboard Next question. I can't remember what question we're up to, but we must be getting close to 20. Question 14. What does the ZX Spectrum Plus 3 have that the Spectrum Plus 2 doesn't? Disk drive, audio chip, joystick ports, numeric keypad. Dante says, my brother used to hide his unwanted vegetables under the cushion on his dining chair. And one day we found a dried pancake of vegetables. Oh, that is disgusting. You make him eat it. My sister used to put tea plates, side, you know, saucers into the VHS player. The answer is disk drive. Seven of you went for numeric keypad. It's not an Amiga 600. Chris says, I killed my brother's VRC by spilling, sorry, VCR. Yes, VCR by spilling Fanta in the back. I denied all knowledge as the repairman said it was Coke. I never spilled Coke in it, only Fanta. He's got off on a technicality there. Oh, it's all change on the scoreboard. Ian has slipped up there, down to seventh. I knew it would happen. Dave Corbett's at the top. Very, very closely followed by Retro or Bust. For Jacko, 6502. Vicky moves up to fourth. Castardo moves up to fifth. Right. I'm, I like an underdog, so I'm rooting for you now, Ian. I'm rooting for you. What have we got? Three questions left. Here we go. Next question. Which mole has appeared in three computer games? Monty, Michael, Miranda, Mario. that famous video game featuring a mole Super Mario Land <laughs> Mario Mole Reese, Reese says he's got it good music Rob Hubbard Moltres. Yeah, Orin likes the music. The answer is Monty. Two of you went for Mario. I know you've just given up at this point if you're going for Mario on that. When I was typing these in, I was thinking, are some of these questions a bit easy? But I had to stick to what was in the magazine. I couldn't really change it. Uh, oh, Retro or Bust was quick. Retro or Bust goes to the top. David Corbett slides down. Ian is clawing back. Come on, Ian. You're back in sixth place. Okay, what have we got? Two more questions, I think. This is the last one. Let's find out. Question 16. Oh, we've got loads more. What is the name of the Greenpeace game? Rainbow Warrior? Dynasty Warriors? Ikari Warriors? Shadow Warrior? I thought we were way further ahead in the questions than that. Okay, so we've got four more questions after this. No, Vicky's clicked the wrong one. And she was uh, in the contest for first place. Paul's having trouble. I guess <clears throat> I don't remember the game, but I know the name because of what really Minty's just said. It, they used the same name for their boat. 50, yeah, 53 of you got that. So quite a lot of you knew that. You got it, Paul. You got it. And 
Oh, Ian was quick. I'm, I'm expecting him to move up. He's moved up to fifth. He is a fighter. Oh, where's Vicky gone? Vicky, 11th. You've dropped out the top 10. Oh, Vicky is kicking herself. I think DBK, I think Barry's going to do something. He's consistently been there in around sixth place. I think he's going to make a sprint finish now. Okay, question 17 of 20. What should Continental Circus have been called? Continental Connection, Continental Drift, Continental Circuit, Continental Breakfast. Oh no, Pajaco's <laughs> misclicked. You haven't heard of this game? Okay, so this was a, I think I can say now everyone's answered. Um, it was a racing game. Formula One racing game. Yeah, there were quite a few good home ports of it. Continental Circuit. 34 of you got that, which means quite a lot of you chose not to answer. You didn't want to lose points. Didn't the arcade machine have some sort of 3D goggles, says Ian? Hmm. We had the arcade at my local arcade, but I didn't play it with any goggles. Maybe there was a special version of it. Ian has clawed his way up to fourth. Retro Bust is the first to break 400,000 and holds the top spot. Vicky's back in eighth, back in the top 10. Where's Pajaku gone? Where have you gone, Paul? 11th. You're trading places with Vicky. Yeah, I always wondered about the title. I always thought, oh, they've called it Circus because the circus kind of travels from town to town. So they've probably done that on purpose. I guess it was some kind of mistranslation or something. I don't know. Okay, question 18 of 20. What is the name of the evil empire you battle in our type? Bido, Byron, the Kilrathi, Bios. Yeah, I was thinking of you, Hasbeard, when I put this answer in. <laughs> I didn't know the answer to this one, I have to admit. So I learned something today. Yeah, Tim spotted something, Wing Commander. Uh, Bido. <clears throat> the Kilrathi is Wing Commander. <clears throat> Byron is has beard plays games in chat. Bios is actually the enemy in is it Forgotten Worlds? It's another shooter. I can't remember now, but it is the name of the enemy in a shooter, not just Bios. Bios. Byron was the quickest, and not a huge amount has changed. Ian's oh, Ian's slipped down to sixth. Okay, we've got two questions left. I think it's really between... Oh, it's hard to say. I'm gonna say anyone in the top five, maybe the top eight, because between them, it really comes down to speed and one wrong answer is just gonna take you completely out of contention. So uh, question 18, 19. Not sure. Let's find out. 19. What colour is the PC engine? Yellow, pink, orange, white. This was genuinely in the quiz. Could be yellow now, says Pajaka. Lovely shade of mauve, says Kosam. Yep, 
Yes, the PC Engine with the CD ROM ROM. The answer was white. 54 of you got that. That's really a question that's going to come down to speed, isn't it? Who was the quickest clicker? Let's find out. The quickest clicker was Retro or Bust. Flexing at the top of the leaderboard. Okay, this is the final question now. So, it's up to you how you want to play this. You might want to take a stab at clicking as quickly as you can on an answer without even reading the question. You might want to not answer. You might want to take your time over it if you're in contention. Here we go. How many Batman games have appeared on the Spectrum and Amstrad? One, three, two, four. He's regretting guessing. Should have just left it. And the answer is three. Oh, that really split you. 17 went for three. 11 went for two. 14 went for four. So as I recall, on the 8 bits, you had the Caped Crusader, which was the comic book one. You had the isometric one and you had the movie. I can tell you now the quiz was from January 1990. So Batman the movie came out in 89, didn't it? Because I was saying 89, 90 before. I didn't want you to find the exact magazine. Ready for the final results? Suspense. Retro or bust? The only one to break 500,000 points. Castado slipped in. Oh no, hang on. Sorry, that was the, the quickest. Uh... No, no, that's right. That's right. Oh, such a rubbish quiz, quiz master. Retro or bust? Castado slipped into second. I told you, Barry, DBK would move up. He's moved into third. Tim, fourth. Vicky clawed back some of her pride after the misclick into fifth. Dave Corbett was second and third a lot of the time, slipped down to sixth. But Jacko, oh, Paul, you've clawed your way back to seventh. Dante in eighth. Paul Kitchen in ninth. I think Paul's won one of these quizzes before. David slipped down to tenth. Ian, the man who was at the top for most of the first part of the quiz, eleventh. Um, Chris, 22nd. Togster, 18th. Me Machine Dean, 30th. We can't be friends anymore. What's happened, Dean? Orin, 36th. Mumbo King, 40. Let's go down. Let's go. The Retro Hour, 55. I think Barry just... Uh, Barry, I think Ravi got distracted. Um... And I'm not going to read out the person who came last in 68th because it's a name that would have come out of a Simpsons episode. Well done, everyone. That was fun. Oh, hello, Dave. I hope you're, hope you're doing well. So well done again to Retro or Bust. You, uh, you, you win the prize of pride. You are our resident game expert. At least until the next quiz. Ah. Thank you to Ross for following and Kurgen73 for following. So we'll just wrap up the stream with a magazine like we normally do. Um, today we're going to read MIDI magazine. Atari's Music Technology Quarterly. <laughs> okay, Tim. Featuring the Atari Stacy. We're not really. But look, MIDI magazine. 
Atari on page two, Atari on page three, Atari on page four. Hang on. Uh, Atari on page five. Atari. 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 Yeah, all Atari all the time. That's right, Minty. And I did see Retrobust um, made a request, a shout out for his channel for winning the quiz. I think that's only fair, isn't it? I'll just get a link. There we go. In the channel is a link. In the chat is a link to Retrobust who won the quiz. So I guess his prize should be a sub. Click and sub. There we go. Let's get back to um, MIDI magazine. No, we're not. We're not going to read MIDI magazine. Just made me laugh when it popped up. Um, so CMVG January 1990 is where the quiz came from. And uh, in the quiz, it's quite nice because whoever owned this back in the day had written their answers in. It's very hard to see because it's blue ink on blue paper. Yeah, they had put their uh, answers in there. Uh, they didn't do great. They got quite a few wrong. Um, they didn't know the name of the C64 sound chip. There were 60 questions, by the way, 63. I didn't put them all in. They didn't know which video game stars at Bin and Pin. Anyone know that? Because they haven't answered that one. Oh, Dynamite Ducks. Is that... Okay, that makes sense. And they didn't know this one, which wasn't in the quiz. What is the full name of Sega's 8-bit system? They've put Mega Drive. Idiots. So, uh, this is a different issue of CVG to round us off. I'm just going to turn the music down a bit now the quiz is over. Blasting your eardrums out. Um, I wanted to just read the news page, which was on page 12. Oh, look, there's Jonathan Ross there. UK PC Engine is go. Uh, is this the one I wanted to read? I can't remember. Yeah. Okay, so I was just going to read the news page here. Let's zoom in. There's uh, a few interesting stories. So, the release of the C64 console. After much speculation, Commodore finally leapt onto the console bandwagon and finally announced the imminent release of their first game system. Yeah, their first game system. Based on the C64, the C64 GS will come with a joystick and a fun-packed four-game cartridge featuring clacks, Fiendish Freddy's Big Top of Fun, Flimbo's Quest and the ultra crumbly international soccer all for 99.99 the selling potential of yet another 8-bit console especially a comparatively low-tech one is we think uncertain especially with mega drives and pc engines becoming so widely available <clears throat> the super nintendo is not out in the uk at this point but we'll be interested to see how this and amstrad's gx4000 featured last um, issue fair you can see what the picture looks like from the picture that's a, there's a sentence. You can see what the console looks like from the picture. But we have it on good authority that the machine shown is actually made of, wait for it, balsa wood. Maybe Commodore are branching into new areas, or could they be barking up the wrong tree? Leave it out. Yeah, balsa wood prototype. Well, we know how that story ended. This went the same way as the GX4000. Next story. Yeah, top punnage. Next story, cabinet craziness. Making a Spectrum look like an arcade machine is no mean feat these days. But Spectrosoft's new pro arcade cabinet just about manages it. Your computer, be it Amiga, Spectrum or console, can be placed in a slide away shelf with the cabinet and connected up to its arcade quality joysticks for that ultimate coin up look and feel. If you don't want to plug in your computer, there's also a jammer compatible version which allows you to plug in and play jammer sort of coin up standard that's interesting because that means the whole cabinet becomes like a super gun or hang on Neil what are you saying or an arcade cabinet 
<laughs> it's an arcade cabinet. What am I saying? Um, <laughs> if that's not good enough for you, advanced modular joysticks can build you a cabinet that will plug into any computer or arcade board. Uh, and it goes on. Priced at... Prices range from 159.95 to 299.95. Now I couldn't find this. I couldn't find this, but I could find something similar in the very same magazine. Um, I think we need to scroll to page 50. I think I saw it. Uh, so there's an advert here for a different device. Cybertech. Was it Cybertech? I can't remember, but it says official launch, the amazing Budget Boy arcade cabinet and the fabulous Universal Energizer. So there's the cabinet. Look at that, the Budget Boy. A Budget Boy is its not a great name for a cabinet, is it? Um, would you have wanted that? It's easy to laugh at, but a younger me probably would have looked at that and gone, I want that. Is it wide enough for my Amstrad CPC 464? Probably not. Yeah, an arcade cabinet shaped computer desk. Budget boy, how many times have you cried? I want an arcade machine. Well, here you are. This has got to be the ultimate add-on. You can put your own TV or monitor in, your own console or computer, slap your joystick in and away you go. Heaven. There's even shelves so you can put all your games on and even an amplifier to connect to your machine. And guess what? Budget Boy has also been de designed to take the Universal Energizer. So if you really want to play arcade games, buy both. Universal Energizer being the joystick next to it there. That doesn't look bad, the joystick. Scart only. How, what, what, why is, why is, why, uh, why is a joystick scart only? Why would you have scart on a joystick? I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. And the joystick costs more than the cabinet. Yeah, you're right. Let's get back to our news. And then there's two more news stories. Uh, on the left, Adios Activision. Just as the, the this issue of CMVG closed, we heard of some rather nasty news about industry giant Activision, responsible for the likes of Power Drift, Galaxy Force and Altered Beast. It seems that the American parent company has been making significant losses over the past year, so they decided to cut back the UK operation to save money. Though some new product will be developed in Britain, it will be restricted to games with a global appeal. The good news is that the tide of events will in no way endanger an Activision Hewson distribution deal, which will see... Activision distributing Paradroid 90, Nebulous 2, and Rubicon. Also, some of Activision's major licensing wares, namely Atomic Robokid and Dragon Breed, will still be appearing on the shelves. However, doubt still lingers over two potential blockbusters, R-Type 2, and this one interested me, Stephen Henry's Snooker, programmed by international karate coder Archie McLean. We've had a sneak preview of the latter, and have to say it would be a damn shame if this awesome 3D simulation never sees the light of day. So correct me if anyone knows any better, but I'm assuming Stephen Hendry's snooker became Jimmy White's snooker. Is that is that what it was going to be originally? Is it? Did Jimmy White just become the champion? Yeah, pretty sure, says Castade. I thought that was a fun fact. I mean... Jimmy Hendry doesn't appear in the game. Jimmy Hendry, sorry, Jimmy White doesn't appear in the game, does he? It's just a title screen. So I guess it was easy to change the box art and the, the name of the game. Uh, DBK says, Jimmy White always lost to Hendry. Reese says, Jimmy Hendrix is snooker. Jimmy Hendrix is snooker is a very different game. Uh, how can you work a Jimi Hendrix pun into a into snooker or vice versa? Okay, and then the uh, Stephen Hendry was great at Woodstock. <laughs> Last news story: Contrivers got a lot of balls. Track balls, that is, you know, those things which resemble upside down mice. Well, these contriver people have announced the imminent release of a snazzy new contract controller. As I'm reading this, I've just got to say, orange is a terrible colour for text in a magazine. Initially for the PC, 
with ST and Amiga models available at any time now for a total of $34.95. Now that may sound like a rather hefty wad of Wonga, but when you consider that this little beast has a button lock, a bull lock, oof, for transportation purposes, and is guaranteed for 1,000 miles of continuous use, it certainly seems like a ready good value for money. If you're interested in laying your hands on one, the contriver can be reached at... Oh, they've just given a phone number. There you go, before the days of the web. Here's a phone number, phone them up. Uh, yeah, Contrive. Contrive is a very old name for a company. So there's no pictures of it, but I have managed to track it down in Music Technology Magazine, 90, December 1990, where they do a trackball roundup. And what I've established is that the one at the bottom, the brown trackball with the pill-like buttons, that's the one we're talking about. Never seen it before. I've seen the Atari one to the right. And the others look fairly generic in their trackball nature. But yeah, the brown colour scheme's an interesting one. Um, why is the Atari 8-bit trackball there? Because it's just D9 and you can... You could use it on pretty much anything, couldn't you? With the right port. Used to use that on an Amiga. That exact trackball we used to use in a dinosaur museum with an Amiga running an AMOS program that taught you about dinosaurs. I was, I was appalled. I opened up the cabinet one day and found an Atari trackball. Um, and then it talks about the thing it says um, what does it say about it unfortunately the switches are in a silly position it's very difficult to have your fingers at the top and bottom switches and comfortably roll the ball with your and if you're left-handed forget it it's the cheapest trackball on the market at 34.99 there you go trackball news everyone so that was um October 1990, although the other magazine we read was December 1990. This one is October 1990. That's your news. Gremlins 2 is the game being promoted on the other page. And that is it for our stream today. I think all that remains is to say a massive thank you to you all for watching the channel, for coming to hang out. 121 of you, Rich's Random Retro Reviews, Staking, Andrew Baxter. Thank you for following. If you're not already following, please do. We'll try and do um, another stream again next uh, month and I will put out a topic in Discord and on Patreon to tell you the topic so you can submit your videos. Always love watching your videos. If you've got any suggestions for a topic, Discord, you can join us at discord.gg forward slash RMC Retro. And we always like to do one thing at the end of our stream, which is to raid someone. Let's go and give them a big hug. So has anyone got any suggestions for anyone that's on Twitch that is streaming right now who we can raid? If not, I will find someone. Let's have a look. I'm not normally on Twitch at this time of day, so I don't know who we will have streaming. Oh, you're welcome, Chris. I'm glad you enjoyed it. called the spider cookie and they are is that syndicate they're playing they're playing syndicate come on that's got to be a winner yeah i think we're gonna i think we're gonna raid them oh it's on dos is it is that okay can we raid a dos gamer I mean, they've got 83 viewers. I'm always happy to raid someone with uh, not many viewers just to make their day if you've got someone in mind. Ah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's raid them. Loading you all up. Ready to go. 63, 73, 77... And thank you, Reese, for subscribing. Let's go and watch Spider Cookie. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.